Another example of a potential misadventure on X, Caleb Williams, who's going to be the first overall pick in the draft. And there have been some weird things that have come up lately, and I've ignored most of them. And, oh, oh, he painted his nails. Oh, he's got a pink phone. Wait, people, shut up. Just shut up. He's still going to be the first overall pick of the Bears, and your assessment is he's going to be pretty damn good, and we both love talking to him in Indianapolis. He gets it. He's mature beyond his years. The Bears are going to get a potential winner here, the franchise quarterback they haven't had since Sid Luckman. So we got to set this up before we get to what Caleb did in response. Here's Greg McElroy on the – this is football podcast with Kevin Clark sharing his concerns because we all have to have a caveat, right? It can't be all positive. We got to have some caveat, I guess. Here's Greg McElroy's caveat on Caleb Williams. The number one thing that concerns me most about Caleb Williams, I look at all the players that have been drafted, number one, number two, number three, way up there near the top of the draft, and seldom are the guys that ultimately go on to become elite players, every single one of them has a gigantic chip on their shoulder. Caleb Williams has never had that. I mean, Caleb Williams, from the time he stepped on campus at Oklahoma to the time he stepped on campus at SC, he has never experienced adversity. Very little adversity as far as how he was received and how he was portrayed as the next best guy. Uh, Even when they went seven and six this year, or six and six or whatever, seven and five. It wasn't because of Caleb. I mean, he did his part and he did. And a lot of that is true. But I do wonder about, is there a sense of entitlement? Is there that chip on the shoulder that's going to keep him going 10, 12 years down the road the way it does Mahomes, who's still pissed that he got drafted 10th? I understand the concept in theory. And again, you got to have something. You got to come up with some caveat. Like everything's great, but is there? And it goes against the whole draft industrial complex because as we get closer and closer to the draft, you're only supposed to say great things about all the players. You can't point out any possible negative. Greg McElroy went there. And I don't know that. I, I, I mean, I, I, I don't. I, I think Caleb Williams is going to find a way to get a chip on his shoulder. He's going to find a way to be properly motivated. He's already thinking about high level technique type issues, stuff that usually you're not consciously aware of and working on actively when you're coming out of college and entering the NFL. He, when we talked to him, I felt like we were talking to a guy who's been in the NFL. Exactly. I, I'm with you. You know there. what I mean? I'm, I'm totally with so, you. I, I, I so, talk to friends and people right away. I'm just like, oh, guys, he's, 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 he's nuanced. He's a gym rat. You could tell he's thought about things a little deeper than some of the other guys we talked to about the quarterback position, right? There was real thought there to, to, to piggyback off what you're saying. Now, now, if, the nuance was lost when it was time for him to decide whether or not to react to what Greg McElroy had to say. Because frankly, like, and this is one of the realities of not having an agent. If you, if you don't want to have an agent, that's your business. But if you have an agent who you communicate with on a regular basis and you have a good relationship with that agent and you rely upon that agent to give you advice, this is a situation where you can activate that relationship and say, you know, I'm really bothered by what Greg McElroy had to say. Now, what the agent can do is say, don't worry about it. I'll call him up and I'll tell him what's what. And maybe he'll go on somewhere else and have a different viewpoint. You know, I've said that before about Lamar Jackson. One of the reasons I believe he fell to number 32 in 2018, he had no one out there to push back against the Bill Polians of the world. Yeah, right. And the agents representing all the other quarterbacks that wanted to be drafted higher than Lamar Jackson were feeding that narrative. And, and he didn't have anyone to defend him, and he didn't defend himself. Caleb Williams doesn't have anyone to defend him. He chose to defend himself. I mean, my advice would have been, number one, let me handle it. Number two, don't you do anything. It's, I mean, I, I don't want this to come off as disrespectful to Greg McElroy, but my reaction would have been, who cares what Greg McElroy says, right? Who cares? Well, He's Greg McElroy. Well, who cares? <laughs> he has nothing to do with the NFL. He's a college guy. He's got nothing to do with the NFL. He's got nothing to do with your future. His opinion doesn't mean jack crap to you, Caleb. Don't waste your time even thinking about it. That's what I would have told him. Yeah. That's what I would have told him. Yeah. Don't do anything about right. it. Right. Okay? It's different if it's, if it's uh, Chris Collinsworth who says it or if it's Troy Aikman who says it, or Tony Romo, or Tom Brady, somebody who's going to be covering your NFL career and doing NFL games and part of the NFL narrative. This is a guy that's irrelevant to you now. Yeah. 
Period. Right. Don't worry about it. Right. Don't worry about it. You're still the number one pick. Yeah. Don't get dragged down by this negativity. That's right. Small but, potatoes. Right. I, I, yeah. I, I hear don't, you there. Don't pick this fight. Right. You're right. above that. You're above that. You know, let people like us defend you or whatever else there. Right. I do think there's a little bit of a smear campaign with Caleb Williams going on right now. I do. You know, and again, why? Well, well what's the point of it? I, I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't really get it either. Maybe to try to get the Bears a little bit. I think there's first off, as we know, the NFL, there is, it can be conservative. We know there are also is factions within the NFL that's religious. Right. And I will say that I think that part of the NFL is a little bit like, whoa, pink nails. Oh, he did this. I don't know. Uh, so they're like a little bit like, whoa, I can't trust that. That's he crazy. He cried after a game. Like, he cried exactly. He so the there's he a cried. part of the NFL that's a little bit like – I feel like the old school a little bit like, whoa, we we only like our quarterbacks to be exactly like this, right? And and that so I think that's going on a little bit. Uh, no doubt about it, right? And then I you know, I think people uh, have this thought of him for some reason that he's entitled a little bit because of yeah, the way the year played out. He didn't play the bowl game. I don't know. Now, one, I would just say this. Like, don't don't put yourself in people's shoes and talk about, you know, you don't know what they've gone through in life, right? All right. First and then the second thing is right uh Oklahoma had him going there having to supplant the guy that you know all the people in the world were telling me was going to be the number one pick in the draft Spencer Rattler oh wait he overcame that he beat him wait transferring to USC after you have a great year at Oklahoma that's not an easy thing to do and just go wait I'm going to go somewhere else and become the man right so that to me shows a little something there Right, there's rumors out there in the NFL world that oh, some of the equipment guys or guys associated with the Oklahoma Sooners football program didn't love them. Like, you know, I don't know what to think with all that stuff. I know there was people down in Texas that didn't like me. They didn't like me because of me. They didn't like me because you know some of the uh, people down there. I dressed like a black guy in baggy jeans and a jersey and uh, some Timberlands, and they judged me like a book by its cover. And I had a faction of people down there that oh, I didn't like him. He's uh, from Jersey. He's a Yankee. So you can't well, believe you did, all that. You did, you did show up in a limo your first day. Hey, it wasn't a real limo. It was a bus, but <laughs> shut up, you jerk. But either way, <laughs> yes. But so yeah, you're going to get judged with this whole thing. <laughs> and then to push back on what Greg McElroy would say, it was like, what adversity did Trevor Lawrence ever go through? What adversity did Andrew Luck go through? Did somebody did show, show me something. What the hell are you talking about? Matthew Stafford, any adversity? What Peyton Manning, what was his adversity? I lost the Heisman? Like, get the hell out of here with that. Lamar Jackson, even to that, what was his adversity as a player, right? I mean, again, it happened at during the draft. I mean, before the process started, if we're right now, like he had faced no adversity to that point. So that's where I, I don't, you know, agree with those assessments there. And the, the main thing is this. Do you notice how people, when they talk about Caleb Williams, it's never about on the field. It's always something else. Right, and I think that kind of says a lot too. It's never like I have a problem with his rocket arm and his unbelievable playmaking. I have a problem with his unbelievable running skills and how he breaks people's ankles four times a game. I have a problem with he's one of the greatest scramblers I've ever seen in college football history. I got a problem with he moves in the pocket and feels the pocket as good as anybody I've ever seen and throws lasers like I've never seen before in my life. Right? I mean that you don't ever hear that. It's always oh his attitude. Oh he cried. Oh like get out of here with all that crap. It seems very C.J. Stroudish from last year that there's just this group that wants to attack it, and I don't understand why. And, you know, it may be a combination of hoping the Bears get wobbly and don't take him and maybe take somebody else. Yep. Or, or, or just, hey, you know what? The Bears are on the rise, and they're going to have this franchise quarterback, and let's start picking at it now. Let's start predicting why and how it's going to be a big failure. It's not going to work. Even though everybody thinks it's going to work, it's not going to work. He's not going to be as great as the Bears think. The Bears aren't going to be as great as people think. It's just not going to work, so the negativity comes from there. Apparently, Greg McElroy did mention that Peyton Manning's adversity came from not winning the high. Oh, my God. How did he make it through life? He made it through life being in the Heisman second? I mean, are you talking about the adversity there? Man, how did the how did Peyton Manning overcome that and become the all-time greatest quarterback ever? How did he do that? He also he also apparently was a little upset 
that Ryan Leaf was oh actually my in gosh. to be the first I, overall damn pick. Damn it. That's what made Peyton Manning so mentally tough. It was all that. I got to – damn. I mean, I, how could I forget that, like, hard life adversity that Peyton Manning went through there? Get out of here with that crap. That's crap. That's all it is. It's made up crap. Yeah. I Look, I – None of these guys motivating, sure for Peyton. I mean, you know, I don't want to say yeah. none. I don't right. want to say none. Right. But it's not really a storyline for college football. The adversity that guys are facing, you know, unless you come in as the seventh guy on the depth chart and you work your way up to starter, or you know, whatever the case may be. Um, but but it's more of an NFL thing. The criticism you take on a big platform yes, from a right. lot of different people right. and a lot of different shows. And that's the adversity he's facing now. The guy who should be celebrated as the best player in this draft class with no apparent flaws, with no apparent weaknesses, with no apparent problems. People are picking at the that's dumbest what I think bothers stuff right. to bring him down. Right. That's right. the adversity he's facing. Right. And if he's looking for a chip on his shoulder, it's all these people who are trying to find a way to bring me down yep. at a time when they should be happy that I'm making it to the NFL because it's a star-driven sport, as we've said time and again. It's a star-driven sport. We've had too many great quarterbacks cycle out. We need more great young quarterbacks cycling in. We need more great quarterbacks in the game, more guys we can celebrate, more guys we can market, more guys we can promote, more guys we can be fascinated by watching and learning about that's what we need and people want to knock him so look bottom line Caleb I we're with you 100 percent my only concern is and and you'll look I've I've fallen victim to this as well sometimes you just can't take it and decide to take matters in your own yeah hands we've all fallen there and have yeah. something to say this is all a setup to say Caleb, if we would have been giving you advice, we'd have said, don't do it. It's just Greg McElroy. It's irrelevant to your life moving forward. Ignore him. Ignore him. Don't give it credence. We otherwise would have had no mention, no reason whatsoever to bring up Greg McElroy on this show ever, ever, especially not for anything he ever did in the NFL, ever. So uh, Caleb Williams went to X and posted, let's go back to school again because I'm bored right now. Adversity, a state or instance of serious or continued difficulty or misfortune. One, didn't start freshman year. Two, popped hammy championship game first quarter, lost because of it. And then three, seven and five, my last year of college ball. And some would argue, I don't know, is not starting as a freshman, is that adversity? I don't know. I, I just think he would have been better off leaving it alone. Yeah. Just yeah. leave it alone. I hear you there. File it away right. and use it as your motivation. Use it as your chip on the shoulder that, that gives you that extra drive to put in the time, to put in the study, to make the full commitment to be as great as you can. I think he already has that anyway, but use the Greg McElroy criticism and all the pink phone and painted nails and cried after a game bull crap to be the best player you can be at the next this, level. This, I, I, you know, this kid's a natural. I mean, that's kind of how I look at it. He's a natural, and I think it bothers people, right? Because it, it's become, you know, he makes it look easy. Right. He he goes. To, he's one of the top recruits in the country. Right. I mean, I know people who saw him play in high school football and like these are people I trust. So they go, whoa, it was like a whoa experience. Right. He went to the Elite 11 camp and the whole camp was like, whoa. And he was the MVP of the camp. Right. He goes to Oklahoma and like we're talking about it. it's Spencer Rattler. You know, you know, all the, all the unqualified people making qualified statements of the world are telling me he's going to the first pick of the draft. Right. He overcomes him easily and just hits the ground running like, oh, my gosh, he's awesome right away. And then just leaves the school and goes, hey, I'll go win the Heisman somewhere else. No big deal. Right. And I think that like bothers people that it's like was that easy and he's that gifted to a degree. I, I don't really get it. Uh, I don't. But, yeah, I think he's, you know, maybe not, you know, your your exact He's a little different in the fact that maybe artsy or whatever. I don't even know what to say, but it's things that I'm not willing to judge or care about uh, because I'm, I'm, I've seen the human, been around him two different times now, and and seen him play football and studied him hard to where you know I don't see what everybody would be picking apart so much. I think everybody's nitpicking and trying to find something and, and really trying to drag him down. I think a lot of it is just some of that same basic resentment that we see from fans directed to players who have, number one, a high degree of God-given skill, and number two, they're doing everything they can to get the most out of it and having success every step of the way. People become jealous and resentful of that. And number two, you know, 
here comes a guy that's going to potentially transform a team that other than the fact that they won the Super Bowl in 1985 and got back to it in 2006, have had 50 years of not great teams and not great results. And the Bears are, are a force now. And Caleb Williams isn't going to my favorite team, so I'm going to look for everything I can to knock Caleb Williams. I think some of that human nature creeps into it. We don't want the Bears to have nice things. We want the Bears to continue to stay bad. We don't want Caleb Williams to become a star player because that's going to disrupt the order of the National Football League. We don't want another Patrick Mahomes. It's tough enough competing with one. We don't want this guy to become another player that's going to dominate and make it harder for other teams to win championships. We're hoping that doesn't happen, and maybe we can manifest it by picking on all these negative things. Maybe that starts an avalanche toward Caleb Williams not thriving in the NFL. I think, I mean, it's hard to cycle, uh, psychoanalyze a whole fan base of you know, folks who follow other teams. But I think part of that is kind of wishful thinking that it's going to end up being a failure. Yeah, I, I think so, too. You're right. I think it's, it's probably baked into it a little bit, too. The fear of what it could be and 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 not wanting to see that potential. And, yeah, for their own benefit, hoping it doesn't work because they don't want to have to, you know, the, the benefit of him being great and all that hurting their own team. I, I hear you there. I definitely think there's some of that. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.